The Tide, too, too much for the Trojans. Mark Rogers TV bringing along Nick Dempsey from Conquest Chronicles for some instant analysis. 52 to 6, Nick. We played uh, this out a number of ways. I've talked to a number of bloggers besides you all week, and none of us played it out this way. Yeah. This is, this is, this was way worse than I think anyone was expecting. I mean, what. Vegas had Alabama at 11 point favorite, I believe it was. So, you know, they, they, they cleared that. Uh, I think this is USC's worst loss since like the 1880s um, or some uh, ridiculously long time. Uh, this, this was bad. And I think what's concerning is not how much they lost by, but that you could tell as, the game went on and it was getting more out of hand and more out of hand that they just, they didn't necessarily run out of gas. It's just like they sort of ran out of fight. And I think that's, what's more concerning than just getting beat by a better team is that you didn't see them continue to fight, continue to like all of a sudden those deep passes for Alabama just start opening up wide. And I think that's what's concern concerns me the most. But you got to tip your hat to that Alabama defense. They might be as good as advertised. There was a lot of hype surrounding that defense in August and tonight boy they sure looked like it they took everything away from that USC defense you can say USC looked bad or that USC deep offense you can say the the Trojans offense looked bad tonight that Max Brown played poorly but honestly you know what could he have done differently there's no one to throw to they took Juju Smith Juju Smith Schuster right out of the game the defensive front completely uh, wrecked the running game. You can't run the ball. There's no targets to throw to. What can you really do if you're the USC offense? Um, but I think the encouraging thing for USC is that their defense at the beginning looked stout, uh, looked very good. I believe they kept the Trojans to, in their first six possessions, it was five punts and a fumble, um, which is insane, especially since everyone was concerned. The biggest question mark everyone was most afraid of for the Trojans was the defensive line. <clears throat> And boy, did they hang in there for a while, but I, there's only so much you can ask them to do before the dam breaks. And boy, when that dam broke, it broke. Yeah, I made the comment to you this week, Nick, when we were setting up the game that um, if you took the, the best handful of players or a couple handfuls of players in the entirety of the game and you divided them between the two teams, it'd be about even, like 8-8 to eight or 10-10. to 10. Like NFL players, and not just guys that are going to make rosters, but really high-impact NFL players, I think the two teams would be about the same, the first five, six, eight players. And then after that, Alabama's got a huge advantage, in my opinion. So I expected like a close first half, like a one-score game, and then Alabama to slowly pull away and win by you know, a couple touchdowns to 20 points, whatever. Um, the, the strange thing about this is that, yeah, along the trenches, USC was supposed to be outmanned defensively, but supposed to bring in one of the best offensive lines in the country. And Max Brown and the, and the, uh, the running game just didn't have a chance. Yeah. Not even a little bit. We got the complete inverse of what everyone would have expected. If you would have asked me. Well, in fact, I think you did ask me before this game started how it's going to go. I would have told you Alabama's just going to run and run and run and jam it down their throats uh, and exploit that young, thoroughly inexperienced defensive front for the Trojans. And at the outset, that's not what we got at all. Kiffin kept working the outside on the edges. And I don't think he did too many bubble screens, but rather than go right up the gut, right at the USC's weakness, he went to the outside. And... I thought I found that impressive. Like maybe perhaps Kiffin uh, knew that the defensive front for USC was better than we all thought, but we didn't really see a lot of power run work very well until later in the game when they finally were able to, to get some breathing room. But I did not expect the USC offensive line, which was supposed to be the strength. Um, a lot of returning starters, a lot of, a lot of great talent did not expect them to just get beat just soundly beat. And there wasn't even a lot of exotic blitzes or crazy things that Alabama was throwing at them. They just beat them. They just lined up their guys and went right through them. Um, they took away the run. Max Brown had less than three seconds. Even Kirk Herbstreit was saying that is 
the amount of time he had was unprecedentedly low for college football. Um, they just took everything away on the de- on on defense, and you got to tip your hat to them. Those guys were great on D. Nick, this game was eerily similar to the Michigan State game in the college football playoff last year because Michigan State for the first six or eight series stone cold defensive effort against Alabama. No score game into the second quarter. Somewhere in the second quarter, Alabama hit a big play to Calvin Ridley, opened it up, got it to ten nothing at half, and Michigan State got inside the five yard line. Could have made it 10-7 at the half. Connor Cook threw a pick, and that was kind of the deal. And they got to the second half, and Alabama blew it away, and everything started to open up. In this one, you have USC. You pointed out the first six defensive drives for USC. They were dominant, and it's a no-score game. Well, it's a, it's a three-to-nothing game because they hit the yeah. ricochet. I, I thought we would uh, <laughs> possibly talk about that in, in more favorable terms uh, at one yeah. point but uh yeah the ricochet field goal for a three nothing lead which held up until seven minutes left in the first half and then they hit the uh the big touchdown pass and uh the the, the key play in my game in um in my perspective was okay max brown was a little bit off target with the interception that got deflected and uh i think it was um humphrey Marlon Humphrey brought it back for the touchdown for Alabama. So it's a 17-3 game, and it just goes to show you against Alabama, pinpoint you have to be completely accurate because that that kid was covered perfectly. Slight deflection, it's intercepted for the pick six. USC comes right down the field. They get in range, and Darius Rogers, it was not a drop. He laid out for the ball, but he had it right in his hands. If he catches that, which he had it, they're inside the five. Maybe he gets to 17-10. to at mm-hmm. the break, and I'm not going to say that they would have won the game, but maybe been in it longer. It's it was almost Changes. a carbon copy of what happened to Michigan State last yeah. year. With a defense that's that good, um, for that that Alabama has, the your margin of error is pretty much zero. Um, and when I say zero, just like you said, that Max Brown interception just a little bit off. Boom, pick six. Uh, that Darius Rogers pass is a little too far. Uh, changes the complexion of the game, then it'll get them down to the score. You have you have zero margin for error, and so if you make a mistake, and I think that's been a huge part of Alabama's sustained success because we're talking about college kids who, in theory, only have 15 hours a week to prepare for these games, and margin of error is generally a lot higher than say in the pros if there's a lot of parity. So. When you come out and you have even the smallest mistakes, it can change things. Now, again, fifty-two to six, you can't really point at anyone playing. See, uh, that if that gone had gone differently, USC would have easily won. But it does change the momentum. And when you put these kids out there on national TV and Jerry World with you know tens of thousands of screaming fans, um, that can get inside your head and then get influenced a little bit by these things. And so, momentum is a big thing in college football, and they just could not find a way on offense. The Trojans could not just to really even get anything going um, and change the momentum or at least give a spark to, say, to send a message to their defense that was playing so well. Hey, we're in this fight too. You're not doing it alone. They just at no point couldn't even get any garbage time touchdowns, which I was <laughs> – was just demoralized. Even when Notre Dame got crushed back in 2012, they got a couple garbage time touchdowns, but we couldn't even pull that off. It was just, it's just sad. Yeah, the USC rushing game. That's something that we've talked about a number of times in the off season. That with a young quarterback, inexperienced, not necessarily a young quarterback, inexperienced quarterback, that the running game was going to be so prominent with his offensive line. Thirty carries for 64 yards. That just never got uh, untracked. And it was difficult to evaluate Max Brown. Yeah. What's amazing to me is, so 64 carries on, or 64 yards on 30 carries. So that's two yards of carry. That's six feet of carry, which means every time we USC ran the ball, they literally got to the line of scrimmage and fell forward. Okay, not every time, but on average. That's sad. That's not good. And it's not good when... Clay Helton has been saying since day one, we're going to bring back some toughness to USC. We've been, we've had this reputation as a team that's very talented, but just isn't tough, isn't competing well. So we're going to go and we're going to run more and we're going to be able, we're going to run, run the ball 60% of the time, 40 plus runs every game. Um, 
that's very discouraging, very disheartening to say, we're going to run, we're going to run, we're going to run. And then when you do, you're bad at it and really bad at it. Um, that's they've got to get that figured out one way or another. Now, maybe Alabama's defense is just that amazing and USC, you know, actually wasn't that bad and they'll come out and they'll get a, get a running game going. But it's very hard to be excited if you're a USC fan right now. There's nothing seemed to go well past uh, in the final, let's say, 37 minutes of this game. Absolutely nothing went well that you can point to and say, okay, there's something there to get excited about. But it's uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna win with the run, you you got to get more than two yards to carry it. That's just got to happen. Max Brown, 14 for 29, just over 100 yards, one interception. Very difficult to analyze his performance at this point uh he's going to have plenty of really good teams to face that we'll get to to see what he can do with a hopefully a little bit of protection we would expect against the likes of i believe utah state next week and then stanford uh i it'll be interesting to go back uh i'm gonna have to go back and look at the game film 14 of 29 those 15 incompletions it'll be interesting to see how many of those were throwaways uh because he had a lot of throwaways because there was just nothing there or the pressure came in and he just had to get rid of it rather than take the sack. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Not that it really changes the stats any, but at least it tells us he's making good decisions. If it's not there, live to fight another day. But 14 to 29 is bad. But what what can you really do without a running game? You, gotta, you need that first to set up the pass, at least in this offense, and he just didn't have it. Yeah, Juju Smith-Schuster, one catch for nine yards. Hmm. That tells us about as yeah. much as we need to know that's night and day from last year when when cody kessler would try to force everything to juju smith schuster even when it wasn't there and now mac now the guy they took him right out of the game max brown got a got to got one pass to him that's ooh, that's some good d's on alabama good for them nick you said the word a couple minutes ago demoralizing uh -huh. we, we can only conjecture. We can't be inside a player's heads or hearts or in the locker room even uh, to know. But uh, it has that potential unless Clay Helton, like many top coaches, is able to turn the page and get the team refocused. Yeah, and that's what you're hoping for. It's, it's, a, it's a good week to be playing Utah State, I think, is to get a little bit of confidence. Obviously, beating Utah State isn't going to help anyone forget losing to Alabama. But I've, I've been talking and writing about this all summer. That opening month, is, this opening month for USC is a bad one. Yes, they'll almost certainly beat Utah State. They got thumped tonight. But what happens if they lose to Stanford and then the week after that, Utah? Not only what happens to this team not only get thumped by Alabama, but what happens when they start one and three? Um. So I, I think how USC responds to this game is going to be far more important than the outcome. Yeah, it's still just one loss, no matter how ugly it was. But can they get it together? Can they say, okay, that was bad, but we know how to get it fixed? Do we, are, we still, are the kids still bought into Clay Helton and his program? Uh, that's going to be the key. And I, if he can't get these kids bought in and they start off one and three and he loses them, Boy, is his seat going to get red hot after his first full year? Uh, I don't think USC fans are going to put up with that for very long. But he's he's got a. This is a very important week in in USC football. Alabama fifty two and USC six. Uh, let's go through the record books at some point. Maybe that can be the research project because you brought it up whenever yeah. it was around the turn of the century. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you would have to find a, a similar loss for the Trojans through their. Uh, historic run and legacy through the decades. Nick Dempsey from uh, Conquest Chronicles helping us sort it out and uh, hopefully move on from here for some uh, games that are going to factor into the Pac-12 championship. Yep, looking forward to uh, looking forward to the Rose Bowl run. <laughs>